this is the uh, the most important part of it. So all of you have read about VSM in, in, in books at school or there are numerous books uh, or articles on the internet that have been produced. Uh, uh, and, and it's not, a, it's not a, a, a rocket science to do a VSM. However, there's a few uh, important elements that you need to consider when you do a VSM. First of all, uh, uh, you don't do a VSM alone yourself in a conference room. Mm -hmm. Many people have a tendency to work uh, in isolation. They don't want to disturb too much. They don't want to remove people from production. And they decide, OK, I'll do the VSM and uh, I'll show it around and people will validate. I think it's a mistake because you're missing the important part of this, the VSM, that is collecting information from, from the operators, from the people uh, on the shop floor directly or managing the process. So first of all, you need to create a team. Uh, uh, you don't want 20 people around the table, but you don't want to be yourself with someone else. You need a, you need a, a, a team of, uh, I would say four, five, six, maybe up to 10, but maximum 10 people, but people directly involved in the process. So not only managers, not only supervisors, not only quality engineers, manufacturing engineers, you need operators. You need people that will tell you exactly, you know, the details of the day-to-day -day process related to uh, to what you're looking at. So once you have done, once you have created your team, then the second important step is to collect the data. So how does it work? We recommend that we always start mapping a VSM starting by the customer. What does the customer want? What do we deliver to the customer? And then we go back. We start by the end and then we go back. What happens before going to shipping? What happens before the other step? And what we do is we definitely, we walk the shop floor and we, we take information from the shop floor. So I'm looking at my, my equipment. I will, I will measure or I will ask the operator, how much time does it take to do one part? I will, I will, I will time it and I have the exact data. Um, ERP, if you're asking for ERP numbers, they might give you a standard time of uh, five minutes per part. When you're on the shop floor and the operator tells you, well, wow, five minutes, it's once in a while when we have this type of product. Most of the time I have to change my adjustment. I have to do this. That's where you need additional information. Because keep in mind that the value of the VSM is the data that you will collect at each, pro at, at each process step. And that data, usually what you will look at is the process time. You will take the change over time. So how much time, I've seen situations where production could last eight hours, but it was taking two shifts, 16 hours just for the setup. Right? So that, that's important to collect mm -hmm. that data, but sometimes you miss it, you don't have it. And, and if you tell me you have a 16 hour set up time for an eight hour production time, I'll tell you right away, let's do a SMED. That's where I will highlight, this is what I need there. Uh, this, the, the continuous improvement tool, the SMED will help me reduce my uh, changeover. You look at your quality, how's my quality at that process? If I have to uh, uh, redo or rework 50% of the parts, this is my priority. I have an issue with this process, the quality is not stable, I have to redo it. So that's what you're gonna get at each process step. So process time, quality data, changeover, how many people I have on this uh, piece of equipment, and important, what is my batch size? Sometimes we produce large batches and then we realize that we take all the time of the equipment when uh, uh, whip continues to uh, pile up uh, in front of the equipment. So two tips, create a team that is directly involved, that knows the, the process steps. And second, walk the shop floor and you walk the shop floor and on your VSM, on your current state mapping, you were right. This mapping has been done 29th of December at 10 o'clock in the morning. So if someone comes to you and argues, well, these numbers never happen, was it, listen, I did it on that day and that's what I collected. So that's real data. Because unfortunately, when you look at averages, you lose the value of, mm -hmm. of, of your mapping. You lose the value because you just go with tendencies. So you're never going to trust any of the data from ERP, KPIs, whatever. You're really going to make your own data. As much as we can, I'll, I'll say 
you have to be realistic and many things happen. You, you, you may want to look at one specific production and the day that you're doing your, your mapping or you with your people, they're not working on that production. So you might want to sometimes compare with other data, but, but I strongly recommend to do it directly on the shop floor with your team and they will be able to tell you, oh, here's what happened here, here's what happened there. So then once you have done that, you come back in the conference room on your whiteboard and you simply design your current state mapping. So you put out your boxes, your numbers, and then you add up every production step, each production step. And you will end up sometimes with five process steps that will take you maybe 10 minutes each of production. That will be like 50 minute process time. But overall, there's so much whip and waste in the process between each steps that you might have a situation where to produce a 50 minute process time, it takes you a week. And that's where, based on that, you identify where are my gaps and what you call the Kaizen burst. You will create Kaizen burst for every single opportunity of improvement you have. And, and that's only talking about the process, the material flow. Mm -hmm. You can have the same uh, uh, analysis to be done with the information flow, mm -hmm. where um, employees might have to go ask people Hey, what do I do next? I don't know what do I do next when I'm finished with this job. So there's a lot of waste in the process. So overall, the VSM is the best tool to identify waste. It's a diagnosis tool to identify where's the waste in your process and then to draft, to design a future state that will be the ideal state where we will remove all that waste. Perfect.